Greetings guitar fans, it's Lindsay here from Maple Street Guitars in Atlanta, Georgia with episode three of the Improvised Secret Weapon Guitar or the Otherwise Repurposed Instrument. And in today's segment, we will be talking about the Terz Tune Guitar. Now, before some of y'all say, would you just call me? I assure you that the Terz Tuning is a very real thing and it's quite useful and certainly doable for any guitar player. So we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this type of guitar and then delve into how you too can make one out of something very readily available and quite modest in price. If we were to get in the time machine and go back about 220 some odd years to the turn of the 19th century, it was a very exciting time for guitars. The uh, guitars that would soon become the benchmark for modern day proportions were just coming into existence. And the very first Terz guitars came about at this time. That's spelled T-E-R-Z. And it refers specifically to a tuning that is three half steps up at G. So these guitars are tuned uh, G, F, C, A sharp or B flat, and then D and G. So rather than capoing a guitar, you have this guitar that is very small and tuned to a higher pitch and there is this beautiful, chimey, ethereal kind of sound. Um, it, it's just way better than having a guitar that is capoed at three. And plus you get a little bit more access. These guitars project so well that they were actually quite popular at a time when steel strings didn't exist because they could overcome more standard tunings and really sustain in um, a louder setting. So uh, at one point, the Style 5, like this guitar here, which um, was made by Martin, this one dates to from around the 30s, um, but it goes back even further to uh, pre-20th century. These were very, very popular, perhaps more than any other guitar Martin was making for the average Joe. So that all being said, uh, these have a long and rich history, but they also have a sound that is like nothing else. And if you uh, give one a chance, I'm almost sure that you're gonna fall in love with it and start trying to figure out how to get one. Now, of course, older ones like this little darling here, again, a pre-war Martin example that's in beautiful shape. This is not an inexpensive guitar these days. So for something that may not be your daily driver, um, the price of thousands of dollars might be a little dear. So being a little bit of an improviser in these kinds of things. I've come up with some great designs that can enable you two to have this kind of sound or something pretty close to it uh, in a much less expensive package. And of course you can go the route of finding a um, more expensive one if you want. But again, for a lot of uh, average folks, what I'm about to show you should be a lot of fun and very attainable. So, Example number one of the Working Man's Terz Tune Guitar is this little booger from my uh, collection. His name is Marty. He is a Martin. This was an LX1, or excuse me, actually an LXM model, one that is all laminate, uh, or what they call high pressure laminate, which is even less expensive, a uh, formica-like substance. And poor little Marty here got totally lunched by some accident such that uh, his back was broken uh, across here. Back was actually, in fact, totally off, bracing loose all over the place. Basically, Marty was dumpster bound, but um, I decided to fix him and bring him back to life, and he's uh, living a quite healthy new life as a Terz tune guitar. Now, one thing that is true of a guitar like this is that it's actually a little bit longer scale than the other old Martin that I showed you in the beginning of this video. Those guitars have, depending on the year, a 21.4 scale or possibly a 22 inch scale. Um, something about that gives them a little bit of a slinkier and more open feel where this guitar, which has a 23 inch scale, is a little bit tighter and of course its construction being somewhat less than optimally resonant, uh, there is not quite the same kind of beautiful shimmer and dimension, yet it still really hits that mark as far as delivering the open voicing uh, of the Terz tuning. And 
uh, it really is pretty simple to uh, produce this if you feel so inclined. Uh, it's mostly a matter of tension. So when it comes down to string tension, you have to take into consideration that you're tuning something way high relative to what this was designed for. So um, provision number one, do not do a turrets tuning with a standard scale length guitar. It will not work well. The guitar will probably implode or do something nasty and you don't want to be around for that and you certainly don't want to do it to a nice guitar. So if you're going to uh, conduct this experiment on your own, definitely find a short scale guitar. I would recommend something really no longer than 23 inches, though I have tried this with something as long as a uh, older GS Mini or actually a Collings Baby. Uh, on the more expensive side of things, which are close to 24 inch scales. But uh, needless to say, it's not too much rocket science. You need to put an extra light string on here. I have this one strung with tens. Um, so that's a readily available set of strings. And then you need to tension the neck appropriately because even with those light strings, once the neck is under the tension of this higher tuning, it will probably need to be snugged up a bit. Other than that, um, you know, some saddle or nut adjustments may be uh, needed if you had a guitar that was already, you know, dialed in for a uh, standard, you know, 12 or light gauge string. But surprisingly, a lot of these guitars don't need as much of that as you would think once you've adjusted the neck properly. And again, assuming you were starting from a good baseline in terms of setup. So here we have, uh, in fact, uh, essentially a free guitar in my case, but um, you know, a guitar that would be two to three hundred dollars on the used market that can absolutely fulfill this role. I've outfitted this one with a pickup, so it can be used live or in a recording situation. And in the mix, accompanying your friends, um, cooking up cool harmonies, this guitar is absolutely a viable tool. So. Um, next, we're going to talk about a more um, exciting or electrifying version of the Turtz. Example number two of the more electrifying uh, sound of the Turtz guitar. Here we have a Squire Jazzmaster Mini HH. 200 bucks ish. <laughs> so, not an expensive guitar, an easy one to experiment with. These ship with a nine on them which is in my opinion utterly stupid I'm not really sure why Fender chooses to do this because it's a very short scale guitar it's designed for kids and with that light of string on it at that short scale it is uh, very let's just say wobbly in terms of the the strings so it's easy to bend things out of tune so when these come into us actually when we're selling them for a standard tuning we immediately set them up with an 11 again this is an example of a short scale necessitating an adjustment in string tension or gauge to achieve a more um, you know stable tension so with the factory issued nines it's actually like straight out of the box you could tune this thing up to G and just make sure that the neck is properly adjusted and off you go with a new Turtz guitar um, of course this being a very inexpensive uh, Squire it did necessitate some adjustment at the nut just to be more playable and uh, proper intonating and setup. I mean, that's just a given. But uh, with maybe 30 minutes of time, 45 minutes of time, I took a stock Fender and made it into a very usable Turks guitar. So uh, if you happen to be walking through a pawn shop or a guitar store um, and you might have any kind of inclination to this kind of subject of creating this little improvised secret weapon funky cool guitar, don't overlook things like this. It is a very inexpensive and easy way to achieve a super cool and very usable result. Now that you guys have a little bit of an exposure to the Turtz guitar and its history, as well as some insights as to how you might cook one up for yourself should you be as enamored with the sound as I am um, and feel inclined to experiment, uh, let's give these little boogers a test drive so you guys can hear what they sound like and hopefully find a little bit of inspiration.
Well, once again, this has been Lindsay here at Maple Street Guitars, and I hope you all enjoyed episode three of my little series on improvised secret weapons or repurposed guitars. If nothing else, maybe your interest got piqued about the Turtz tuning, and you might delve a little bit into the history of this relatively obscure but very significant form of the guitar. I think it's a super fun instrument. And if you have any um, interest in building one of your own and have any questions or maybe need some help putting it together, please don't hesitate to reach out to us or find us on the web at maplestreetguitars.com. In the meantime, stay tuned for episode four, which will be about Nashville tuning. Until then, thanks for watching and happy picking. Mm -hmm.